Yeah, absolutely. Well, here's another issue that people want ease, convenience, and also apparently somewhere to eat, drink and have a chat. Now, because a new survey that we were sent here at the BBC suggests many large multinational companies who have office spaces, physical, traditional office spaces, are planning to slash those in the next few years to adapt to the more home working and hybrid working that we're seeing around the world. But Lee Elliott, partner and global head of Occupier Research at the property firm Knight Frank, who carried out the survey, says the bigger issue is quality over quantity. We've surveyed more than 350 global corporate real estate leaders. These are the people that are delivering and designing the workplace for, we estimate, more than 10 million people around the world and asking them how they're thinking about real estate and how they're changing the workplace on the back of the pandemic experience. And so what have they been telling you? And what they've been saying is that after a lot of debate in the wider press and indeed the real estate markets about the death of the office and such like narratives, what we're actually seeing is a steady commitment to an evolution of the office product and the office environment for the benefit of both employee and employer. Right. Work through what does that look like? What does that mean in in sort of physical terms, changes terms? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing to say, Will, is that there's a big change going on in terms of work style. And that's the starting point of this. You know, how people work will determine ultimately the environment that is provided for them. And there's no doubt the genie is now out of the bottle in terms of flexible working. And the large majority of the the very largest organisations that responded to our survey, so those companies in employing more than 50,000 people, nearly three quarters of them are adopting a hybrid work style. And as a consequence, I think that's having two direct implications for real estate, for the traditional office. One is the amount of space that businesses will need. And the second is sort of the qualities of the offices that they provide their people. And on that latter point, it's about creating spaces that are much less about row upon row of desks with people processing email and much more about spaces that bring people together to collaborate, create, socialise and educate. Just before we move into that quality area, yeah. just one final one around quantity, because you found quite interesting differences in different parts of the world, didn't you, as well, in, in terms of that total amount of space that companies thought they might need? Yeah, I mean, there is a geographical distinction, but there's also a distinction by size of company. So the overarching message, which I think has been a surprise to many, is that 55% of all companies that we surveyed anticipate extending or increasing their global footprint over the course of the next three years. So in essence, the total amount of space globally that an occupier will hold will increase. But there is a very clear distinction between different sizes of companies. So again, those largest companies employing more than 50,000 people, it's just short of half of those, are anticipating reducing their footprint. The majority, somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 percent of their current footprint. And is that why we're seeing some of the kind of confusion in, say, in the US at the moment, Lee in particular, where big construction firms don't know what it is that they should be building? And and we're seeing that ripple down into banks, aren't we? Banks that lend to people who build office space too, being very, I guess, being pulled in each direction. Yeah, there's very mixed signals out there at the moment, Will. And I think one of the challenges has been, of course, that we've been through this period of experimentation and we're still only really evaluating what good looks like in terms of workplace provision. As I said earlier, I think we're in the foothills of evolving the office product. In the US specifically, I think you've got a couple of things going on. One, you know, you've got some of the major tech players that have been long on space because they were banking space essentially to accommodate headcount growth projections, which perhaps have not materialized either in their total or at the same pace. And as a consequence, you're now seeing some of those businesses starting to release space back or not commit to space, which is creating nervousness. And then I think the other thing that you've got in the American workplace is perhaps a more generous attitude towards how much space each individual employee has traditionally had. You know, American companies in America are generally not as far forward on the activity-based work in more flexible work styles and work designs that we've seen perhaps in Europe and Asia. Uh, Lee Elliott of Knight Frank there. Takara, to my horror, um, some of their survey also suggested that uh, hot desking was here to stay and booking desks via uh, via mobile phone or apps or things like that. I think anybody from the BBC still listening anywhere in an office will be <laughs> putting their heads in their hands because we try and introduce a system not unlike that. But but what do you think, in answer to Lee Elliott's qu- kind of question he put out there, what, what does good office space look like, do you think? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm coming from the perspective where in Canada, there was just a recent interest uh, rate hike and Canadians have the highest household debt, actually, you know, in the G7. 
Um, and so right now, you know, good office etiquette for a lot of technology companies and startups that I talk to is working from home and not even mm. leasing a place altogether. It's just too expensive right now. Um, but personally, like uh, I'm seeing, you know, in my office, there's a lot of shared desks, but that's because it's a hybrid model. So people are in, you know, part of the week and then, you know, there's someone coming in afterwards. And do you have these kind of social breakout meeting spaces that, that Lee Elliott was talking about? I mean, there are shared spaces where and, you know, there's obviously offices and, and rooms, meeting rooms and stuff like that. Um, it's typically, you know, there isn't a whole office to have these like yeah. open conversations yeah. with, right? When it's hybrid. So, I mean, I, I think maybe if you're li- you're working in, a, in an office that has more people every day, that can happen. But hybrid that, just doesn't really allow that. That's the thing, Sushma, isn't it? I, I think when we hear this sometimes, it all sounds great on paper. I, I haven't been to a place where this is happening brilliantly in practice. I mean, everybody mocked what was it, 10, 15 years ago, Google with the slides and the beanbags and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Where, where has this been done well? Where has revolutionized this? I, I think I think only Google. I think Google <laughs> has done a great job, you know. Uh, and uh, if you visited their visit You'd go their share offices, a chat on just... a beanbag, would you? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, I, I went to the, the Gurgaon office. It's so uh, beautiful. Actually, my son works in Google. So he took us around and it's just so, uh, it's beautiful. I But I wonder, uh, you know, I mean, how do you work and deal? Uh, uh, you know, you cannot work and play together. I That's what I feel. I mean, you can take a break, but uh, to completely uh, defocus and uh, go and sit and have a cup of coffee. And there's so much food available there and there's lots <laughs> of facilities available there. I mean, um, I, I don't think I'd be able to work there. Takara, but, can you mix uh, your work and play? I, you know, I think a lot of people mix the two because work consumes their entire so life. Time, so yeah. again, like in tech companies, you know, and it takes people, people a long time to get to and from offices as well. It does. I mean, where I live, Toronto, most people live outside the city. So it can be an hour, 45, two hour drive in. So you tend to have friends and play and drink after work because there's a long commute back. So why then do these companies need to build these spaces when, you know, the likes of WeWork have tried to do this for them? Why why has that model failed, do you think? Or it doesn't seem to be changing these companies' opinions completely. They still think they need to build offices. I think, you know, um, I think there's a lot of investment in these offices as well. You have to remember that a lot of companies have put a lot of money into real estate, particularly in downtown cores. Um, But I also think it's a little bit easier to get people to work together and maybe stay longer past the eight hour workday if they're in office away from, you know, their home and their neighborhoods and stuff like that. I mean, you often see in tech people will work 12, 14 hour days when they're in office because it kind of all blurs together. So I I think you haven't got much choice but to share your coffee then. Exactly. exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Sushma, I'm glad your your son is uh, is embraced exactly what Lee Elliott was asking us to working with his colleagues, (laughs) interacting, sharing ideas. Yes, yes. Well, he does, but he stays away from, a, a lot from the food. He said people put on weight when they join Google. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there you go. Well, let's hope that they build a company gym there at that Google in uh, <laughs> Google. Well, they in... probably do have it. I'm sure they have it. Almost certainly. <laughs> they um, have everything. If the BBC is listening, we'll take anything. A bit of outdoor space, something like that. Though we are. Everybody's giving me the thumbs up through the glass. At least we've got a nice view out over a dark piazza out here in the BBC Media City buildings. Um, just about it from us on Business Matters. Big thanks to to Kara Small and to Sushma Ramachandran as always. Thanks to you for listening and thanks to our team as well here, to Tom, to Peter, Ben and Stefania who's been producing. Uh, we'll see you all same time tomorrow for more Business Matters. Business Matters.